Well, thank you all uh, for being here on such short notice, and let me thank um, all the representatives of labor uh, that have convened here today uh, to announce an agreement uh, framework that we will be taking to the membership, various locals in San Francisco, uh, to address not only preserving city jobs, but pretty, uh, preserving city services in San Francisco. We have been working very collaboratively together over the course of the last few weeks uh, to organize a framework uh, to move us off the 37 and a half hour proposal, a framework again that preserves jobs uh, and preserves city services. Uh, we, in good faith, negotiated uh, over the course of those last few weeks an agreement that uh, has at the moment uh, a two year term, an agreement that includes uh, roughly 5% or the equivalent of 5% uh, wage concessions. Uh, that includes a framework where we will address some outstanding issues, and to the extent you want to inquire what some of those may look like, please don't, but we're happy <laughs> nonetheless to indulge you uh, broadly. Um, and uh, I think uh, really meets the spirit of what makes the city a special place. I, I don't want to just patronize the folks around me, uh, but you've heard, members of press, I know you've heard me say this privately and publicly, that every single time we ask the public employees unions of the city to step up, they step up. And it's just a fact. It's an objective fact. Uh, every time we need them to keep the doors open for city services and keep government moving, uh, they step up. And they've done it here again with this uh, tentative framework. And uh, it is a big day in San Francisco. It continues in that tradition uh, of compromise, give and take, uh, and contribution. And that contribution, we recognize, goes always, now, not just both ways. This is not just about labor management. This is about all of us recognizing our interdependence, the fact that we're all in this together. Uh, every single person you see uh, behind me and next to me, uh, they're customers as well of city services. They care about the quality of services they receive from city government, not just the services they provide, but the services they receive as well. And they care about their friends and neighbors, and they care about the fabric of this city. And that was represented in this uh, framework. This was represented in these negotiations, uh, and I'm very pleased and very grateful. I want to thank, in particular, Bob Muscat, who really led the charge here uh, and, uh, and, and really created the framework of collaboration uh, where he got everybody uh, around the table. And uh, you can see a lot of what I mean. When I say everybody, I don't mean literally, but pretty close uh, to literally everybody around the table. The challenge now is self-evident, and let's not overpromise this, and let's be sober. Uh, we still have to get the rank and file to ratify. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done. There's a lot of interaction that needs to be advanced. Uh, but there's, uh, I think, a collective expectation because of the enormity of the uh, task at hand and because of the framework uh, needing to be resolved quickly in order to get us where we need to go with this budget that's looming. Um, and because of the fact that so many participants came together and agreed, regardless of their particular issues on this framework, that uh, this, uh, this tentative agreement looks, I think, to uh, be a very positive uh, step in the right direction. But again, lots of work still remains to be done. And so with that, let me turn it over to Bob, uh, who will talk perhaps a little bit more succinctly about what that work looks like in the next uh, few days and weeks. And then, of course, we'll avail ourselves to any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Uh, we're very pleased today and uh, start out by thanking the mayor. Uh, these are uh, pretty extraordinary times and uh, government uh, uh, throughout the country and here in San Francisco is being challenged in a way it has never been uh, challenged before and fortunately for us we have uh, the mayor's creativity and leadership to uh, guide us and he's been extraordinarily patient with us and persistent. He's been here when we've needed him and in all honesty we couldn't have put the framework together without him. Uh, so I think on behalf of all my colleagues, we do want to start off by uh, thanking him. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, um, uh, city employees have helped in the past, six out of the last eight years. But this is very different than in times past. And what we had to do this time around is something beyond what we've had to do before. But all city employees care most about their services and the city. Uh, all of us feel confident that uh, uh, our members will be willing to ratify these agreements when they're completed uh, because it is the best thing for them and for 
uh, the people that live in uh, San Francisco. I want to thank all my colleagues in labor. Each one of these organizations is different. They have different cultures. They have different structures. And they've tried to remain as patient and flexible as they can so that we could put uh, this kind of a coalition together to present to the city one table one functional relationship where we can get something like this done uh, in short order. All of the individual uh, unions will now have to finish out the details of their particular agreement and ratify them, but the central table people will assist all those local unions in making that happen and making it happen in uh, a very uh, quick fashion because our part of uh, this situation is only a small part of a much bigger problem and the mayor and other people uh, in city management have to move on at the same time and make sure that the rest of the $522 million uh, gap is closed and all of us not only are glad our part is put together, uh, but also look forward to working with him and his team on the rest of that gap. And we feel uh, some sense of responsibility to help the mayor do that. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I want to recognize Mickey Callahan and Steve Cava for their outstanding work and uh, leadership and stewardship of this process as well. And Greg Wagner, uh, my budget office and uh, again thank uh, Bob and his team for their patience and their understanding and their willingness to, to come around the table and work through uh, this process. So with that uh, we're here to answer any questions and uh, happy to take yours first. Uh, my understanding is that furlough days are a part of this agreement yeah. as well? So the 5%, the roughly 5% is will be made up of 12 furlough days. The idea is not to shut government down every other Friday. Uh, it's to be strategic and thoughtful about how we do that. Uh, there will be a framework uh, that still needs to be worked out as to exactly what those days uh, will be, but they'll look a, lot, a little bit like this. If, for example, we are about to all uh, enjoy Thanksgiving holiday uh, with the rest of the public, uh, and city services are, um, are usually that day before Thanksgiving, uh, modestly, um, in need, uh, that may be a day that we looked uh, to do a furlough day. Uh, for example, the days between Christmas, Hanukkah, and New Year's, I was here this last year. I can assure you not many people were, uh, and I'm not just talking city employees. There weren't many people running through city hall doors, uh, and it seemed to me that, that we should have generally just looked at that week anyway. Uh, that will be some of the days we'll look at for a furlough. So we're going to work through that language. Uh, essential services will always uh, be protected. We'll be thoughtful about uh, how we furlough. So it doesn't cost us more and over time. It doesn't uh, cost us money because we're not receiving some uh, federal match or state match or some other enterprise contribution. We'll be very strategic, not make the mistakes, candidly, the state of California has made, which has been a terrible process in terms of furloughs. This is one done in collaboration with uh, our labor leaders and uh, will be strategically considered. How many people will be laid off under this altered plan? Well, we hope this substantially mitigates and reduces the number of layoffs. Uh, that being said, we're still processing what this ultimately means. Bob made the point uh, that this is part of the solution to get us to a balanced budget. It's not the entire solution, quite the contrary. So we'll still uh, be looking at the prospect of some layoffs, but this significantly reduces the number of layoffs. If this is ratified, uh, what the rank and file, the men and women in, uh, represented by the leadership right here, will be saving hundreds, if not thousands of jobs. Uh, and that's a very significant thing. Uh, Mayor, if in fact this is five, only 5%, and the 37 and a half work week uh, assumed a much greater savings. How could there possibly be fewer layoffs? Well, again, well, I'm assuming the status quo uh, because by no means uh, had we completed the processing of that 37 and a half hours. That being said, uh, the numbers are significant in two ways. One is the, 30, the 37 and a half hour uh, proposal did not include every city employee, as you recall. Um, quite the contrary. Uh, this more broadly does. Now, there's still some outstanding negotiations we're having with police and fire and others, though I want to thank our fire representatives for being part of this collaboration and this discussion. 
Um, and uh, that uh, gives me some confidence as we move forward in those negotiations, MAA um, and others that will be a part of uh, ongoing negotiations. Uh, but again, I think this gives you a framework of what we hope and expect from them as well. And uh, that's one way that it gets us close to uh, a similar dollar amount. Not exactly the same dollar amount, but gets us substantially there. Uh, if you add the enterprise departments, we're getting close, not there, but just shy of a hundred million range. So if you add it all up, uh, it's in that range. It's a little shy of that what's, on an annual basis. What's a two-year agreement? What city services will be affected by the furlough days? It sounds like it won't be police and fire. Well, no. Again, essential services are not just public safety. Uh, it will include appropriate services so that people, including public employees, that want to go on a Friday or a Thursday or a Monday or go uh, a day before a holiday and want to get their marriage certificate or marriage license, that they know that someone may actually be there to open up the door or someone may answer the phone. So we'll work through that from a management uh, labor perspective, and we'll work through uh, those classifications that we deem appropriate to have skeletal crews on those days uh, and uh, I'm confident we can work through that again I just want people to know that I'm not talking about just shutting down government every other week uh, I never truly understood why one has to do that as opposed to being more strategic and thoughtful uh, and judicious in terms of how you mitigate the acuity of a closure uh, but nonetheless recognize that we are all sacrificing and uh, we're all in this together and we need to have these furlough days in order to achieve our our collective ends does this include not doing as much outsourcing yeah well we have there are a number of other things and and what i think was very helpful about this process is we clarified our intent not just in terms of labor management issues but also in terms of the larger budget and there's a lot of uh, things that are said about well, what else we may or may not be doing with the budget. We had a chance around the table to talk more specifically about that. Uh, and those were part of those discussions I was referencing a moment ago. Uh, so there's more clarity. I mean, again, we're going to have to be making a lot of tough choices here, not just with uh, labor, uh, but with nonprofits, with others uh, in city government that have personal service contracts and other contracts. And they're, they're part of the solution as well. And so they should expect, uh, and many, trust me, already are quite familiar and aware that uh, we'll be knocking on their door uh, to discuss uh, ways where they can step up to the plate to help us with this deficit as well. Well, could take you this just approach initially? Why not take this approach initially? Other oh, than the, 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 the thirty-seven give take the generated give and take a lot of, of anxiety. The give and take of, of the give and take is always a give and take. You start here, you get there, you work out your differences. Um, but I'm very pleased where we ended up. I, I made it. I, I know that you reported this because you must have, because I said it. I think ad nauseum that I was always open to argument that this was not an absolute approach. Uh, I said it on so many occasions that again I almost feel awkward repeating it to you again because I'm sure that was reported when I made the proposals. Um, and to the extent it wasn't, it certainly should have been. Uh, always open to better ideas or different ideas. And I maintain that commitment to keep an open mind and we work through uh, that around the table. And uh, I think this is an appropriate uh, uh, agreement uh, that uh, all of us uh, can, under the circumstances, no one's jumping up and down here. It's, no, this is very difficult for everyone. Um, that uh, is, uh, is a good agreement under those circumstances. Bob, well, could you just um, talk about why you think uh, the rank and file will see this as a better way to go than the 37 and a half hour week? Well, uh, could, well, over to the <coughs> microphone. Yeah, sure. Sorry. <laughs> For a lot of different reasons. Uh, first off, it's not permanent. Uh, the 37 and a half hour uh, change in structure would have been permanent. So if the economy picks up uh, after the two year term of this agreement, Everything uh, returns to normal, the status quo prior to this. So I think that is going to be uh, huge for people. Um, uh, others won't uh, have to come uh, to work a half hour uh, less a day and then still incur child care and transportation uh, costs. I think the amount is a little less than what the mayor originally uh, had in mind, and we found other ways to save uh, money. So I think the fact that everybody has to share equally in the sacrifice, including the mayor and management and the board of supervisors and others, is uh, going to be important uh, to the members that are going to be voting on this. There's a whole variety of different uh, reasons why uh, the, the uh, framework that we're now talking about uh, really will be much better received. Would, it, did any unions in particular <clears throat> object to this? I mean, SEIU has been very vocal about its opposition to the mayor's plan and has seemed pretty opposed all along to really doing much of anything. 
Are they on board this? Uh, uh, they can speak for themselves. I feel comfortable uh, that they've been with the coalition all the way through. Uh, they've been very productive and creative in the process. Their members met over the last two days and support the general framework uh, that we're talking about. How this framework, uh, framework gets applied to different unions may vary, and we're trying to provide SEIU, which has a very complex membership structure, provide SEIU the maximum flexibility in terms of implementing uh, uh, this uh, framework for their membership. But it will, in fact, equal the amount that everybody has agreed to give back to the city. And that's kind of the beauty of the flexibility that the mayor has been, uh, you know, has uh, been agreeable uh, with and I think will work for all the different unions that you see uh, represented behind us. And let me just say, and I, I mean this uh, completely, congruently, SEIU has been at the table. Uh, they've been extraordinarily uh, respectful and responsive and engaged, and uh, I couldn't be more pleased. Uh, I mean that. Regardless of what may be happening here or there, uh, it has been a very positive working relationship, and I'm extraordinarily pleased they're here uh, today. But as Bob said, all this still needs to be processed. Everyone has own unique uh, challenges and needs. This goes towards ratification, and we've committed ourselves to working very collaboratively over the course of the next week or two to get there. Is this one of those deals where you're not going to be rescinding the notices now and as unions ratify that then for those particular yeah. unions it would be rescinded so it could possibly still stand for some uh, of the yeah. groups and yeah, not for I, my others. hope and expectation is that that proposal is off the table but that will happen upon ratification as you state and do they all have to ratify it for it uh, to be we'll off just the do table? one by one and we'll move forward as quickly as there's ratification as quickly as for those classifications and those representative classes uh, we will move away from that proposal but, I, but my question is, do they all have to do it? No, we will go, we'll go, we'll process this. There's, look, there's a hope and expectation because of this unique, I won't call it unprecedented, but, you know, in some ways you could argue unprecedented collaboration uh, over the course of the last uh, number of weeks, roughly month, that mm -hmm. we're all in this together. And I'd like to think uh, out of respect for that collaboration and respect for one another that everyone recognizes they all want to be participants in this framework and how they get to these numbers in terms of that framework uh, is subject to their unique uh, needs and challenges uh, but that we all recognize we're in this together and uh, we hope that all these uh, these notices are rescinded at least that's my hope and expectation why does this have to be ratified and the part-time work week didn't have to be well, we don't want to get in legal disputes, and they could argue one thing, we would argue another. Uh, but this was uh, this this ultimately requires a ratification. Um, layoffs generally forget the 37 and a half hour proposal. If we just did layoffs, they do not. I'm trying to avoid layoffs. I'm trying to keep people employed. And that was my stated intent from day one, uh, whether it was received favorably or not. That was always the intent. Uh, and there's a different proposal now to achieve a similar end and that requires in this case this process requires ratification and you had said before there wasn't time to go to each union individually but that's why we pull everyone in the same room and we've been working so collaboratively together and and that's really been the great benefit i mean you you, you wouldn't see trust me just getting every one of these folks on the same schedule that's that, that, that's <laughs> deserving of a press conference itself <laughs> Ratification votes will begin when does well we have another week of individual union meetings with a few of the unions that have um, issues that need to be resolved that aren't central table issues uh, hopefully we'll get that all done by the end of next week and then the following week the ratifications uh, will take place if you are the leader of a small union that process is a lot simpler and, and a lot quicker than if you're the leader of uh, leaders of SEIU which is you know ten times as large as some of the other unions so uh, but I would say within the next three weeks we should have hopefully have it all uh, uh, worked out and ratified do these furlough days apply to the mayor's office and board and elected officials and well, our board. position is they do <laughs> <laughs> well as you, you know, know the, the mayor's office lead, uh, led by example of my chief of yeah. staff's already contributed already contributed 15 percent as have I on top of the fact that I didn't take the raise a few years ago so I'm I'm sixty seventy thousand dollars into the contribute contribution uh in terms of general fund and have been for some time uh and uh, we've asked as you know department heads to give back more and uh we'll be uh having a department head meeting about uh some of our, our management classifications without getting into negotiations there um uh to uh come up with some creative ideas as well we're, we're recognized we need to lead by example 
include the board of supervisors? Uh, Supervisor Bevan Dufty, coincidentally, is to your left. And we appreciate <laughs> the supervisor coming in. <laughs> board members have made decisions to make concessions uh, so I don't want to speak about myself to put anyone in a different light but yeah. so several members of the board have previously made concessions and have made additional concessions to uh, to reach what the mayor was seeking and the board aides are represented uh, mm -hmm. and so we expect as representative employees they'll be participating as others but they voted against uh, you'll have to talk to them Barbara yeah, I, I, I can control what I can control in terms of trying to influence and process and coordinate and collaborate. Uh, the board has its own uh, role and responsibility. You said this was this was good for the public, but could you explain why having City Hall basically closed down for let's say two weeks is well, better uh, than again, than having a well, a few fewer people here? Yeah. One that would be a bad thing. That would be a bad thing. That would be a bad thing, but I haven't heard anyone talk about closing down City Hall for two weeks. Not a human soul. Well, you, you just mentioned between no. the... Over but the I Christmas recall my preamble, which was quite clear, I hoped, but clearly not enough. Okay, I, I did. Day. To have City Hall completely well, closed never any, said day, any normal In fact, I, day. my preamble was we do not want to shut down uh, on a Friday, a Saturday, a Sunday, even during the week. We want to look strategically at city services, look at their use and utilization patterns, analyze that, make a determination based upon the time, manner, place that those services are typically used and sometimes when they're not accessed in a significant way and make the determination based on that judgment when the best day to reduce the hours or shut down an operation for a period of time. So you talk about reduced staff, not total closure. That's exactly right. Yeah. Would so it still be the same exact 12 days or different groups? No, we meeting? move it around. That's all subject yeah, to... No, no one has ever uh, talked about all 12 days being in the form of closure or partial closures. Um, uh, maybe a, a portion of them might, but the majority of them will be an individual uh, scheduling decision. So uh, nobody's talking about 12 days of closure. Yeah, R really important. Point. I, it's why I started with it, and let me repeat it, and I'll write it down. Confusing, though. It yeah. sounded we're not like shutting people. down. We're not shutting down <laughs> services 12 days a year. We're not meaning we're not. Little government is not going to come to a screeching halt and black out 12 days a year. It will be very strategically and thoughtfully done in a way where hopefully most impacts won't even be noticed. I mean, that would be the ideal, and that's just. And you say, well, how is that possible? Well, next year you'll see exactly how it was possible because we'll have to work through it, process it. It's good judgment, good leadership, good labor leadership, good management leadership, and we'll work through that. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, guys.